welcome you all to the Using Pizio to Apply Quality Tools workshop. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Hashim Al-Sharif. I'm a quality management specialist. I have a master's degree in public health, specializing in health system and quality management. And I will tell you exactly what are the tools of quality and how I found an easier way to apply those tools. Uh, first of all, uh, what do you expect from this workshop? Let me tell you a, a story about how things uh, led to this workshop. I learned how to use those tools in the traditional way, and we apply them in the traditional way. That, mean, that means we have to do all the tools in handwriting. And uh, it was time consuming. Uh, I thought about it for a second. It's against everything we believe in in quality. In quality, these tools were managed and created to make an efficient uh, system. Using them in a handwriting way or in a traditional way would lead to long times of delays. However, we found a better way to do this thing via technology. Uh, So what's the objective of this workshop? It's an introduction about quality tools, mostly about the flowchart, fishbone, and gun chart. And I will teach you how to use these tools in Visio software. Once I heard a saying, it helped me to do my work better, which is, you don't need to work harder, just work smarter. The idea of this, we have a lot of tools in these days. Technology has developed greatly in the last uh, 10 years. And we have many tools that can help us uh, expedite the process of quality. And using these tools in the right way can make our work smarter. Edward Deming, he's one of the quality gurus, said once, said once that if you can't describe what you are doing as a process, you don't know what you are doing. It's a very powerful saying that you need to explain in details what you are doing in process. So exactly what is the flowchart and why it is used? As you can see, a flowchart is a picture of separate steps of a process in a sequential order. Anything in your life can be a process. You waking up in the morning, it's a process. And then doing activity, going to work is a process. A performing task is a process. Going to bed is the end of the process of bad day. We have to map everything in our life, and work is no exception. So when can you use a flowchart? You can use the flowchart to develop an understanding of how a process is done, to a study of process for improvement, to communicate to others about the process. And of course, in many quality aspects, is to document a process, and many people use the flowchart when they are doing a project. I will give you an example. If I ask you, how can you label the recruitment process? You can see the examples and components of recruitment on this, in the screen. It's scattered all over. It starts from the applicant uh, submitting CVs, recruitment uh, filters the CVs, matching CVs with the vacancy, interview, and the human resources will process the paper, and then the candidate will start the job. This basically the process of recruitment, all the components in very uh, simple detail. But is it clear? Is it sequential? Can you build on it? Can you know the order of each of them? No, we can't. So we have to do a flow chart to make this process easier. The flowchart most use symbols. You can see the start and end. If you use this symbol, it's dedicated to the start and end. You don't have to write the start and end for each process. And if you use the process the symbol, you can just write inside it what you exactly mean. And if you have a decision which is, will uh, determine if you're going to make a saying in yes or no situations, you must use the diamond shape. So these are the most common shapes that you will use in Visio software. So how can we do the component before in either way? This is how it looks like when you organize it in a Visio software. 
and I will tell you exactly how can you do it, and I will take you step by step by doing so. Uh, now you can see the screen for uh, the desktop. Once you go to the video software, this is this is the main uh, the logo or the main entrance for the video software. This is the control panel. You can make any decision that you need, or from organizational chart to cross-functional to workflow diagram. What we need is a basic flow chart. Once we start the flow chart. It will tell us exactly the shapes that we need on the left. You can see the decision. You can see the process. You can see start and end. You can see the data. You can see the documents. And you can apply it right here in this box. So we'll start the recruitment process. We said this is going to be for the applicant submitting CV. It will give you the shape that you desire for the start. The software will be make your job easier. Once you click on one of the arrows, it will take you to any direction. Once you start the, uh, your process, the next one is going to be uh, depends on your need. In our need now, as in recruitment, we need the recruitment filter CD, which is an activity. Therefore, it's a process. So we will say here the recruitment filters CVs. Now we have two processes. We will use another one for our sake, which is matching CV with a vacancy. It's basically a component of the recruitment. You saw it before, scattered all over. Now it's starting to get a shape. Now it's starting to get an order. You can realize that it's going to a situation where you need an interview. An interview is a decision. It's either yes or no, mostly. So in the interview, we will have two directions. Either we go to a yes, which is will lead to the HR processing the paper, which is another activity. Or if it says no, we will have to take the process to the previous one to match it with another CV. And you can identify each process. You can label it as a no. You can label it as a yes. So you can t you can, everything will be clear when you read the process. Now we finished all the components of the process. The finally, you need to end it with the same uh, shape you started with, the end or start shape. And we end with start work for a new job. This is basically an easier way of doing an overview process, high-level process. It can explain the process of recruitment in a higher level, more organized, more filtered. You can tell what's the steps in a sequence order. You can improve and do improvement projects, and you can document the process for purposes. Uh, but this is not all. There is another kind of flowcharts, this one called cross-functional. For the sake of time, I will use an example already made. In the cross-functional, it will give you more details about each department or each uh, category. We identified in the previous flowchart that there is an applicant doing the process. There is a recruitment in the process. There is an HR in the process. And finally, the department. And instead of labeling or setting everything in details, uh, previously it was a high level, only give you a general idea of the process. Now we can write it in detail under each category or each domain that follows. So we have here the applicant submitting CVs under the applicant. And the process moves to the recruitment. Now, without even saying who filters the CV, we know it's in the recruitment process. Who match the CV with a vacancy? We know it's the recruitment. And it goes to the interview. The same concept. 
follow. If there's a yes, it will go to the HR to process the paper. If no, it will go back to the previous step, which is matching CV with the vacancy. And after the HR processing the paper, it will start work at the new job, which is at the new department. Uh, this is basically how can you do a flowchart in very easier way uh, to do it. Uh, I hope it was clear to everyone. I'm trying to just go back to the main uh, category. Everything is fine, Mr. Hashim. Go ahead, please. Hmm. Yes, I'm trying to just go back to the main set. Um, and hopefully, you can see the the main screen. Yes. So so far, we explained the process of the high-level process, and we explained the cross function. The difference between them, the high-level process, it must be for overview or general idea, so people cannot spend more time looking for each set of processes or who is the categories or who is the domain. But once you go to the cross function. It will be more organized under each domain, under each category, and of course to the need of the project. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the previous uh, sessions about the flowcharts, this is the opportunity to discuss them. Uh, I'm assuming it was clear. Uh, we can move to the next one. All right. We have the fish pond. Uh, there is a question. So, I think there is a there is a question. Okay, we will listen to the question first from Mr. Suleiman. If he can uh, take the mic, if or if he can ask on the chat. Sure. Uh, we'll just we'll go on until the question is appeared, and we'll answer it later on. The fishbone analysis. Fishbone analysis is one of the my favorite ways of identifying uh, root cause of we call it cause and effect or Ishikawa diagram. It was first used by Dr. Ishikawa in 1943. It is used to identify all the root cause analysis which is likely to lead to a problem. When we use this or how to use it, we have to decide on a problem statement, which is going to be the effect. After we identify the effect of the problem, we go to the next, uh, the brainstorm, the cause of the problem. This exercise is better well done by a group uh, from multiple stakeholders. All the people who are responsible for an issue, they must be together so they can discuss it from different points of view. The diagram must be categorized. There are almost six categories that you have to cover based on the problem. You don't have to use them all. You can use them based on your situation. You, you need to cover the method, the equipment which is used, the people or manpower that you have, the materials, the measurements, and the environment. These are the main six domains that you need to cover in the fishbone analysis so you can identify the root cause of the analysis. And you need to identify the primary causes then the secondary causes. Once you do the fishbone analysis, you start from the effect to the primary cause to the secondary cause. And I will tell you exactly why it is called fishbone analysis. This is how it looks like. I hope it's clear for everyone. You start, you can use this example in your uh, daily life. For instance, I'm being late to work. I need to find this, this is the effect on my life. I need to find what's the cause of this problem because it kept happening over and over again. So I use four domains, which is people or manpower, method, equipment, and environment. When I analyzed the cause of the problem, I found that the, the reason why I was being late to work because I woke up late. This is the primary cause. For the secondary cause, why you woke up late? Because I slept late. You see how the trend is going? You start from the effect to the primary cause to the secondary cause. You're being, if we go to the next domain, which is method, 
why you're being late to work? Because I take the primary cause, I drive a car. And the secondary cause, because I'm always taking highways. And highways are always, there is an issue with them. Then I will go to the equipment. Some of the occasion, I had flat tires. And I, it took time to fix those tires. And the reason is, I had this problem. The secondary cause is I have lack of maintenance to the car. When we get to the environment, I was I found myself that I, there is a traffic jam, which led to me uh, the effect which is being late to work. And the secondary cause of the traffic jam is, uh, for instance, at Riyadh we have the metro project, and do the metro project, and there's a traffic jam every day, which is consequently we am being late to work. So how can I analyze this problem? How can I fix it? You start with analyzing the secondary cause. You improve based on the secondary cause. We will start for the waking up late. I will work on it from, I will go to bed early next time. If I sleep early, I will wake up early. I will try if I'm going to work in time. If it's not working, I will see the method of driving the car. If it's taking the highways, always getting it me late, I will change the route. And hopefully, this will impact the, the, the effect which is being laid to work. And as a result, you go on the equipment, you try to fix the car, hopefully you will have a better situation. The environment sometimes, this is the thing, you cannot fix all the causes. Sometimes the environment, like the traffic jam and the, because of the metro project, you cannot do anything about it. Some uh, industries, they will tell you they are being laid to work because of the weather. Uh, there is a sandstorm, there is rain. These effects, you cannot really work do anything about it. Just you have to identify them to be prepared for a situation. Hopefully, uh, the fishbone analysis was very clear. Uh, I, uh, the gun chart is one of my favorite tools. I used this and while I was doing my master studies. A professor once told me that if you need to do your project, you must organize your time. In order to organize your time, you need to find a situation where a software that can help you do it in an easier way, and you can always update it. This is how I learned how, uh, about gunshots. Uh, Yes, sure. I will talk about the environment. Uh, I will go back to the environment. Uh, Dr. Feria, sometimes not all the causes that you can do something about it. Environment, sometimes it's hard to do an improvement project on it or fix the cause. Like, for instance, the traffic jam because of the metro project. As an individual, there is nothing I can do about it to fix it. Uh, in Jeddah, for instance, the rain issue. Hopefully the sound is, uh, is clear now. The template. Uh, I will show you exactly how can you find this template. You can go to the physio program. We'll start a new one. This is categories. This is the control panel for uh, the physio. Uh, so you can go to the categories. Once to go to the business, you will find it again, uh, under the cause and effect diagram. It's exactly we just did that. It will even give you the areas for the domains. This is the main effect. Uh, first domain, second domain, third domain. Uh, can you see this? Oh, OK. Let's share the desktop again. I will take you again to the first step. This is the main do, uh, control panel for the physio. For the effect and cause diagram, you go under categories. You go under business. You will find it under cause and effect diagram. Once you create it, you will see this diagram. You have your effect here. 
this is the first effect. Uh, this is the first domain. Let's say people. This is equipment. We can say this is method. And this is environment. As you can see, we have the, the basic science of the fishbone analysis. Now, if you need a primary cause, you just drag the arrow to the primary cause here, click on it, write first cause. Same thing here. And you will have a secondary cause from, from there. And you will write the same thing about it. And you will have a secondary cause maybe in this one. And if you want to be fancy, you can use the fishbone diagram the fish frame, it will give you the same exact diagram I just explained. This is basically how to use it, very simple. Uh, I'm sure you, everybody used it before, uh, but this is an easier way to do it. Is it clear for everyone how to do that? This is the beauty of technology. You don't have to do it in paper. You don't have to write it down on paper sticks. Or this is how we used to do it. We used to bring paper sticks and paper notes, and we'd uh, label them all, and we try to stick them under each domain. It's very simple, very efficient. Uh, you can do it. And I advise everybody after this session to go back and apply this tool and see how it goes with you. Let's move on to the next one, which is the gun chart. As I explained, gun chart is used to show the task or a given project. Uh, I'm sorry about the break-in. It could be an internet connection. I apologize that in advance. However, gun chart demonstrates the progress of each phase with a clear illustration. But what is it used for? You can use it for scheduling and monitoring a tasks of a project. You can use it for a status of a project. You can also use it following a sequence of process for a project or a task. This is how it's going to look like. This is basically a gun chart. It will tell you the task. I used the example here of my, of my research paper when I did it. I had to organize myself to searching for articles, and I gave myself five days. And you can see the five days on that labeled. After that, I had to read the abstract. And I, was, I gave myself four days to do that. After reading the abstract, I said, I need to read the full article. Probably this will need another week to do so. Summaries and summarizing the article, it took almost four days from me. And then writing the article, it took almost six days to do it. I managed to finish on time. I, think I gave myself a month to do it. I only had uh, six weeks to finish uh, my uh, master's thesis. I have to find a way to make it on time. I found this tool is going to be very helpful to do it. If you can, if you can let's say, if you can map your schedule of your your tasks against the week. Each day you come and check the progress of your uh, situation. I found myself even ahead of schedule. Being organized is very essential, especially if you do a project, especially if you're writing uh, a research paper. There is a template. I will show you how to do it right now. I just want to give you a concept of a gun chart. It's very simple. Uh, I will take you again to the physio screen. I, ha I have done this workshop physically, face to face with participants. And each one of those steps, they had to do it in front of me, and I was helping them. It's hands on. Uh, being able to do it electronically is it could be quite difficult, but it gives you an idea how to do it. In Gunshot, we go again to the basic categories. And you will find it under scheduling. 
this is Gantt chart. Before we start, it will tell you exactly how many tasks do you need. I need five tasks. The format, I need on days, hours per days. I will work for eight hours. Today is the 19th. Let's say I need to submit a paper by 19th of December. It will, this is what we got. Tasks, date, template. I need, as simple as, we can go through it. This is the first task. Let's say the duration we need, it's, it will take us four days to do it. You can see it's directly implemented. Another way to do it, this is task two. Task two, let's say it will start right after task one expires. It's already moved there. And we will say it will require us seven days to do it. The third task, I can start it where, or move where the first, the second task ended, or I can move it to go overlap with it. You can do sometimes two tasks at the same time. Let's say I, I have to read an article and I have to write a summary about it. This is task two, this is task three. I will give another four days for this process. The next one, we will start where it ended the most previous uh, task. And the next one, we will give ourselves an eight days to do it. We're almost there. Another way to do it, we can just drag the timetable and just map it against it. It's basically easy to use, simple. You can do it either way you want. You can even, uh, you can go to the gun chart, configure working hours. Let's say in Saudi and then a Sunday all the way to Thursday. This is our working days. Friday and Saturday will have it off. It will reflect on the weekend on the schedule. You can work on it any way you want. Hopefully that was clear. Uh, uh, let's go back to the comments. Uh, this, you can use an Arabic version for it. You can write in Arabic in the, in the template. You don't have to write in English. It's up to your need, uh, up to your language setting, as the others said. We can use uh, Microsoft for this, for sure. And uh, if you have any questions, this is basically the end of my presentation. I will read some of the questions. Or if there is a way to do it in uh, the mic, uh, Mr. Talal can help us uh, with that. Allah, uh, Allah, If there is any questions, if someone can uh, talk, uh, then Thank you. Then, uh, please let me know on, on the chat so I can give him the moderator to talk. Otherwise, he can ask on, on chat. I can answer the question for uh, Mr. Ali about his uh, institution used to document all the processes and they found uh, lots of gaps in most procedures since the old days of documenting process depend on the action of the department. Uh, Mr. Ali, there is another tool in quality that will help you greatly. Try to search for uh, value stream analysis. Value stream analysis is after you finish mapping your processes, you apply value stream analysis where you can see what is the procedures or the processes that you have done, which not really important to the, to the procedure. 
And if there is any gaps, how can you fix those? So it's another tool, uh, Mr. Ali. Look for value stream analysis. It will be very helpful for you. Value stream map, it's, it's not about, uh, there's no template for it. You can do it manually, or it's a different concept. Uh, this does not have it. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Dr. Afrial, uh, Mr. Talala informed me that this session will be recorded and it will be presented in YouTube. You can find it there anytime uh, if you have any further questions or anytime if you have a feedback. Uh, this is my Twitter account. You can just ask any questions you need if, if I did not cover it in this session. Hopefully, uh, document it. I will ask uh, Mr. Suleiman a question. Uh, it's the same question we have answered previously. Complete application built by using Physio. Um, I don't really understand the questions, but you can build your own processes, flowcharts, and put them in a portfolio. Uh, automating the, the processes is going to be up to your department or the, to your organization. Physio is free. Uh, I work in an academic institution, so it's provided free for us. You can download it. I think you have to purchase the software. Uh, it's not really that hard, but it's going to be very, very easy to to get, and it's going to be very helpful. The return on the investment on this software will change your life. Uh, I have not heard about the that tool. Uh, statistical, no. Visio basically it's about mapping. It's about uh, drawing diagrams, uh, scheduling, uh, organizational chart. It's about um, business. Uh, you can also do the diagram for total uh, TQM, total quality management. You can also do the diagram for uh, the Six Sigma. It's also provided in this uh, software. Uh, so you can use the brainstorm. The session finished now. Yes, uh, this is the session. This is all I have. I'm just answering the questions in case you have any. Uh, similar to smart art, yet more variable and more options. Smart art is very limited. Very, very limited under the Microsoft. This is going to give you more options, uh, uh, user friendly, it's specialized in uh, using uh, diagrams. Smart art is basically if you don't have any other tool, smart art would do it. Uh, the process to people, I think, instead of assigning tasks, uh, I, I received this question about if we can assign the process to people or tasks. Uh, if you use the uh, Gantt chart, the information you enter, it's up to you. Regardless, of the, uh, it's not about tasks, it's about people. It's about how you utilize this information. The template is there. It's about you, how can you fill the information. Uh, how can you get the software? Just Google it. You can find it. You can purchase it online. Uh, ask your if you work in there somewhere. Ask your IT to to provide it to you. Uh, it's I don't think it's that expensive. It's going to be very easy to purchase, and I advise everyone to download it. Download the trial for now. Try to play with it for a while. Try to use the fishbone analysis. Try to use the gun chart. Try to do a flow chart once, twice, three times. Because every time you do a flow chart, you will find a way to make it easier. You will find a way to improve the process that you have. No, it's not going to be implemented in the Word doc. You can copy the information you need and paste it anywhere. I just copy it and paste it to the um, as PowerPoint as you can see it. There are updating in the future. You can see multiple tools. The, be the idea, the most ideal way to do the, this workshop is to be in hands-on. I will give you a scenarios, and everybody will be doing uh, to work on it. 
I will assist you to uh, navigate the software. If, since we have in a virtual, I explained to you how to do it. I showed you how to do it. Just download the trial, and trust me, it's going to make your life much easier. Uh, no, uh, does not have the value stream analysis. In which aspect of the academic life do you find it beneficial to advise? In academia, you can use Fishbone to work on case scenarios. If you have case scenarios, Fishbone is the best tool to analyze that case scenario. Uh, if you, as a, as a personnel or as an academic, you can plan your schedule for the whole semester using a chart. If you want to do a research, the best idea to, to write the research steps is to do a flow chart. Quality tools can help you in any aspect that you need. The quality tools are there to make your life efficient, easier to uh, user friendly. Just try to apply it and modify it to your need. Uh, I think this is it. Uh, hopefully, this presentation was helpful to you. Hopefully, you can learn from this knowledge and apply it in your uh, daily life or work. I, uh, in quality, we, we believe in feedback. Uh, from the feedback I received here, it uh, was very uh, helpful and uh, encouraging, but also you can hit me personally or on uh, via my Twitter account. Hopefully, uh, we can do more workshops in the future. Uh, I look for more collaboration with uh, Saudi Digital Library. Uh, thank you, Mr. Talal, for your kind support in this matter. This is my first time doing an, uh, a virtual workshop. I hope you were patient with me. And uh, as a quality, I have to look back on this and try to improve it for the next time. Thank you all. يعطيك العافية أخوي هاشم والله يعطيك الله يعطيك العافية على العرض المتميز ونشكر الجميع على على الحضور والمشاركة وأيضا قبل ما نختم أذكركم أيضا بالمكتبة الرقمية السعودية ومصادر المعلومات التي تحتويها هي متوفرة بشكل مجاني أكثر من 200 مليون إي دوكيومنتس من كتب ومجلات ودوريات مجانا متوفر على بوابة المكتبة الرقمية السعودية وأيضا بإمكان أي شخص من من أي جامعة سعودية الاستفادة من مصادر المعلومات الإلكترونية اللي توفرها المكتبة الرقمية السعودية. إحنا نقيم هذه الدورات حتى نرفع مستوى الوعي من أهمية استخدام مصادر المعلومات. ليس الجميع يستخدم مصادر المعلومات ويستفيد منها في إنتاج البحوث العلمية وأيضا يستفيد من البرامج اللي اللي إحنا نقيم عليها دورات مثل البرنامج اللي قدمه الأستاذ هاشم اليوم وغيرها من البرامج الأخرى شكرا للجميع والله يعطيكم العافية وإن شاء الله نشوفكم في دورة أخرى شكرا للأستاذ هاشم مرة ثانية يعطيكم العافية هل أحد عنده سؤال؟